Hi guys, I am Jigvinder and in this video, we are going to learn how to set up a VPN in Windows Server 2012 R2. VPN or Virtual Private Network as the name suggests is a group of private networks where there is no dedicated link or line between them. They are connected virtually through public network or internet. In this video, we are going to configure a VPN server which can be used to provide access to users of branch offices, users working in Soho, small office, home office or can also be used to provide network access of companies, partnership firms or business partners, etc. Let's discuss the requirements on Windows Server 2012 R2 to configure VPN. Two NICs or network interface cards or network cards are needed to configure VPN. One network card for public network or internet and second one for intranet or private network. A static public IP address is needed if you are deploying it in a production environment. You can get it from ISP or Internet Service Provider, but if you are testing it in a lab environment, you can use any private IP address also. My server is having two network interface cards and on one network card, I configured IP address 200.200.200.200 with default mask of 255.255.255.0 I am using this address as static public IP address which is facing internet and will be used by client computers to establish connection with VPN server. Second IP address configured is 192.168.1.110 with default mask which is on my private network or intranet. Now let's move on server 2012 R2 to perform this activity of VPN configuration. I am on my Windows Server 2012. To install a new role, we have to open Server Manager which is already opened in front of you. In Server Manager dashboard, click on second option that is Add Roles and Features. Before you begin page of Add Roles and Features wizard appears in front of you. Click on Next. On next page of wizard, Role Based or Feature Based installation is selected by default. Click on Next button. On next screen, we have to select a server from pool to install this role. I have only one server which is server 1 and it is already selected. I click on next button. On server roles page, select remote access role from the list and click next. Server features page appear. We click on next button again. Click on next and on select role services page, click first option direct access and VPN. The wizard will ask you to add some additional features required for direct access and VPN. These are the features without which the VPN role will not work properly. Click add features to add these features. After adding these role features, another role is selected by wizard for installation. It is IAS role or web server role. Click on next button. Role services related to IAS server role appears before you. Click on Next. Confirmation page appears. Click on Install button to install this role. The process has started and it will take some time. For the period of time, we pause the video and continue it after the process is complete. Remote access role is installed successfully on this server. Now we have to configure or deploy a VPN. To configure VPN, you can click on Tools and from List. Click on Remote Access or simply click Remote Access in left pane and in middle pane select the server 1 and right click it. From context menu click Remote Access. Remote Access Console Manager appears in front of you. In the left pane click on Direct Access and VPN. The VPN server hasn't yet configured. Select Run the Getting Started wizard. Welcome screen of configure remote access wizard appears. Here we can select deploy direct access and VPN both. We can select deploy direct access only or we can select deploy VPN only. To deploy VPN, 
click on deploy VPN only. After clicking it, routing and remote access MMC appears. To configure VPN, right click on server 1 and from context menu, click on configure and enable routing and remote access. Another wizard starts, click on next button, select first option, remote access, dial up and VPN and click on next button. Select VPN to configure VPN and click next. The most important page of wizard appears in front of you. Here you have to select the network interface which is facing internet or that connects this server to internet. Two IP addresses are configured on my server. We have decided that 200.200.200.200 will be used as IP address facing internet. Here use the IP address provided to you or your organization by the ISP or internet service provider. Be careful in making this selection. After selecting the IP address which connects this server to internet, click on next button. The next page of wizard asks you to decide the method for assigning IP addresses to remote clients. It means the computers which are going to connect to this VPN. There are two options. First option works if you have a DSCP server in your environment and you decide that the same DSCP server will be used to provide IP addresses to remote clients. But we don't have any DSCP server in our environment, so we select second option which allows us to specify the range of IP address which can be assigned to remote clients. Click on next button. To specify new range, click on new button. I type start IP address 10.10.10.1 and end IP address 10.10.10.100. Therefore, number of IP addresses available for remote clients are 100. From this range, IP addresses will be provided to remote clients. Click on OK button and then click on next button. If you have a radius server for authentication in your environment, you can set up it here. Radius server is a kind of central authentication server. But we don't have any radius server, we click on next. To deploy a VPN on this server, on last page of wizard, click finish. A message related to DSCP relay agent configuration appears in front of you. Click OK. Wizard is trying to start services. The services started successfully and VPN server status is now up. Let's check network interface. Both our interfaces public and private appears here. Ports which are used by remote clients to make connections. Protocols used are SSTP, PPTP or point to point tunneling protocol and internet key exchange V2 or IKE V2. From here, you can see the clients which are remotely connected to this VPN server. Now let's create a new user and allow him to access this server remotely through VPN. I minimize these MMCs and in server manager dashboard, click on tools and from the list, click on computer management. If you have Active Directory installed in this network, then you have to perform this activity of user creation and configuration in Active Directory users and computers. We don't have any Active Directory in this environment. Click on local users and computers. Click on users. To create a new user, right click anywhere in the middle pane and click on new user from the context menu. Type the name of user. I type test user 1, type full name and description, but it's optional. Type the password. User must change password is selected. We are using it in a test environment. I deselect it. Select on user cannot change password and password never expires. After this, I click on create button. Click on close. To allow this user to make connection through VPN, double click it. Select dial in tab. Because we don't have any network policy server in our network, select allow and click on OK. So we have successfully deployed VPN on our Windows Server 2012 R2. 
be created a user and allowed him remote access to this VPN server through his dial-in properties. Now let's check one more thing, that is firewall. For successful VPN connection, the remote access connection should be allowed to pass through your firewall. We don't have any third party firewall, but Windows firewall is providing security to our server. To open Windows firewall, I move mouse pointer to left bottom corner and right click here. From the context menu, I select control panel. In control panel, I select system and security and in system and security, we can click on Windows Firewall to check its status and configure it. Here is one more option to directly allow an app through Windows Firewall. We click on it. Check that remote access is allowed through Firewall or not. Yeah, here it is. It's allowed here. If it is not allowed here, make sure to allow remote access to communicate through Firewall. If it is not allowed, your VPN connection will not work. In this video, we learned about how to deploy a VPN in Windows Server 2012 R2. If you like the video, don't forget to press like button. To get latest information about videos in your mailbox, please subscribe to my channel. So that's all in this video. Thanks for watching.